I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just as sharp as they can be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. We go to therapy yeah. last night. So I, was, I went to, my, my therapist is in Kingston. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went to the mall beforehand to pick up some shit. Okay. Uh, cause I was going to target and then I was like, yeah. well, I'll go in the mall. Cause I want to look for something. Yada, yada, mm-hmm. yada. That mall is non-existent. No, it's like super dead. It's super scary. Yeah. Yeah. Like the mall I'm... is most useful to avoid turning left into the Lowe's parking lot. And that, yeah. that's, that's what I use it for. They so just go in the mall and then go across straight across to Lowe's instead of turning left. <laughs> it actually made me feel kind of sad when I walked through cause I'm like, Man, this used to be, like, such a different place, not even, like, yeah. ten years ago. Oh, yeah. Like... Well, it used to be bumping. And they made yeah. some decisions, like, they fixed it up, which I get, but carpeting all of the floor Ugh. didn't make sense to me. So, it's kind of like a creepypasta I saw recently. Yeah. Um, someone had written, this is my first attempt at a creepypasta, be yeah. gentle, and it was a single-sentence creepypasta. Oh, no. Carpeted kitchen (laughs) that's a pretty good one it is a pretty good one it gave me a little bit of a terror yeah just from cats alone (laughs) the uh so i see you're wearing a last podcast on the left i am yeah it was a christmas present for my sister she knows what's up man she she, it's it's good stuff and I, uh, i hadn't seen it yet oh it's good the live show is good and um so so yesterday mm-hmm. I took the day off work and I was gonna mm-hmm. meet with um so was, I'm not gonna say anybody's name, but I was gonna meet yeah. with, with someone who had recently retired. Okay. Um, who I who I like from work and we we're gonna meet up at my favorite bar, hang out for a little bit. So we went there and then nice. he shows up and he brought um another one of his buddies. Yeah. Who I did like he didn't say beforehand and he and he didn't tell me anything about the guy. I think but I think it was a surprise he just likes the guy, but I think he might have been like, well, Brandon might like this guy. So he, he brings this guy over. Yeah. And we start talking. And it turns out he was a very successful, like, musician for hire. Oh, in, like, really? In the 80s. Yeah. So he had stories. What? And he's also telling stories of, like, he had a look in his eye, like, things he can't say in public and all that. So we, we hung out at the bar for a while. Then we all nice. went back to my place because he wanted to see the guitars and the build and, and, and play yeah, um, yeah. The, the amp and all that. But well, this guy had stories about like Greg Allman and Cher, and like what? <laughs> yeah, he was he was uh just some random dude. Well, I guess I guess we live in the Hudson Valley, so that's not like it's insane not... to just run into someone who has stories about people because it's like the Hudson Valley no. is one of those weird locations, right? Yeah, and here here's it's... that guy with uh, Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> what <laughs> so, yeah so i was like oh shit that's so we, just we had a bunch of guitar talk we played for a little bit that's it was kind crazy of wild it is that's also kind of wild. very funny because so he's very fun great guy mm-hmm. he um he just has a private nightclub in his backyard i guess what but, uh he the funniest thing is he retired air quotes didn't want to do the traveling thing anymore in yeah. like because like bus life is hard and all that yeah. So he became a, a music teacher uh-huh. locally, um, okay. uh, and he taught, like, he was, like, K through 5. And I was like, oh, how'd that go? And he's like, it's the fucking worst. <laughs> <laughs> I was That's like, oh, yeah, phenomenal. I, I bet five years of recorders nonstop would do that to you. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. Yeah. It was funny. It was fun, but it's funny. And I had him. I didn't have him. He saw the the my other builds, and he started noodling with them. So I asked him for feedback on them, and it made me happy because all his comments, because he's an honest guy, so he had comments. But all his comments were the same things that I was thinking to myself. So it nice. sort of shored up that whatever my guitar compass was was actually correct. That's pretty good. 
yeah so i was like that's that's good i don't have to second guess anything if i start thinking oh maybe i should tweak this or that so yeah it's time to say welcome to cryptopedia an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind each week we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world tackling the tales of monsters folklore and the paranormal with uh a dash of skepticism and sometimes long rants about transformers or other stuff i'm brandon I'm John. Also, I forgot to say, belated oh. happy birthday. Oh, why, thank you. Yes, yeah. I sent you a text yesterday, but I didn't say it in person. <laughs> I'm still not technically saying it in person, but it's a it's my voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so two items, both of which I'm going to cut out. Um, one, do you work tomorrow? No. Oh, no, tomorrow. Monday? Yes, why? Okay, I have off Monday. Uh, I could I'm take, busy tomorrow. I, you don't have to take Monday off tomorrow. I was going to try to find out who had off and try, uh, for like board games and shit, but don't worry about it. Oh. So this <sighs> week's cryptid is fish-like in appearance. It became popular in 1997, and it resides in the rivers along the southern, southern tip of Africa. Any guesses on what it could be? Fish-like in nature? Fish-like. Fish-like. Some would call it horse-like. Horse-like? In Southern Africa? Yep. Uh, it's not Moko Mimble, right? No. That's Congo. that's Congo. No, no, that's it's not, yeah. And I think I think we've already pretty much decided that I'm going to cover that so I can get angry again. Yes. <laughs> um, 1997? Yes. That's a late cryptid. It's a very late cryptid. Ooh, man. Um I don't know. That might not have been in that might not been in uh the quote unquote scholastic book fair stuff. I honestly I don't, don't think know. it was. Yeah, so today we're going to cover the Mamlambo. Okay. Uh, that's still that's Mamlambo? I hadn't heard of it before I started looking yeah. up the uh uh stuff about it either. I haven't I haven't ever heard of that. Yeah, there was no way I was going to remember that just because, um, or know that. I've never heard of that before. That's actually... I haven't either. It's a really I, interesting one. There's not a lot on it, but it's very, it's a real, I find it interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 1997, there's not a lot of, like, circumstantial story, and it's a sea monster, too. Well, mm-hmm. I say sea monster because, for me, anything that lives underwater, I classify as a sea monster. Yeah. Because they all have the same general oeuvre about them. Yeah, they're fans of liquid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, I think all creatures are fans of liquid, to be fair. That's true. That's very true. Yeah, yeah. So off the southern, or sorry, off the southeastern cape of Africa, just after the official end of apartheid, the effects of which uh, are still felt today, reports of a water monster began to be reported near Trensky the first territory to be declared independent of South Africa. Now, before I continue reading, I'm going to say all of the words are going to be mispronounced. That's just all of them. You that, sure? That's it. I'm pretty, I like mean, 90%. I think you got, most, I think you got some, most of that right, at least. There's a lot of the words are going to be, it's it's going to be rough. The, um, so when you were, when you were, like, talking to me about this a little bit, I think you yeah. asked me how to explain apartheid in yeah. a few words. So my first thought about what it was going to be this week was uh, the Mandela effect. Nope. Because uh, I was like, yeah, I mean, we could do an episode on that. The uh, <laughs> the other thing is maybe the Mamlambo was created by the Man- Mandela effect. Maybe it's a cryptid from another parallel dimension. I can't say that. <laughs> Is that uh is that where the uh the extra dimensional Bigfoot uh theory is? Maybe it's a uh Mandela are we just saying that the Mandela fa- well no, I guess everyone says the Mandela effect is like an alternate reality universe type deal. Yeah, huh. the the whole idea of that this is something that I haven't researched, so I don't know the exact claims. Um but the whole idea is that we all like moved across dimensions or something moved across dimensions, which is kinda I mean it's easier to just assume that people have bad memories, but I don't. I think people are too prideful to admit that they have a bad memory. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, see, the most recent for me 
example of Mandela effect is I clearly remember the genie from Aladdin being Robin Williams. Yeah, and yeah. who do you remember it being now? Well, now it's Will Smith. Well, yeah, that's just different actors, though. I don't think so. Ah, oh, man, that's such that that trailer. I haven't seen it. I've just oh, seen screenshots of a nightmare creature. No. Oh God! If you see him in motion, yeah. If you see, I, I was actually thinking about doing Jin as a joke, um, after seeing that trailer. But man, I feel like uh, I feel like Will Smith CGI'd is gonna give me yeah. more nightmares than any cryptid I've covered up for this show. The if you do do Jin. At some point, I highly recommend. Um, I think they actually put it in the in the, the episode title, the archaeological fantasies podcast episode on the jinn. Because oh, yeah, yeah, it's like they give historical and archaeological. Um, it, it's just really good. Uh, Did you know that ghouls yeah. are jinn? Did you know that um, jinn is made from berries? No, I think we're talking about two different types of jinn. No juniper Amabugs. berries. Homophones. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, maybe that's why. I, well, no. Is does Jin technically ca- classify as a spirit? It is. Yes. Okay, so it's spirits because it's it, they're yeah. genies. You're yeah. drinking genies. Yeah, man. It's where I get all my power. Oh no! <laughs> I thought you got all your power from whiskey. I got all my power from scotch and uh, beards and. Um, uh, uh, that one time, that one chemical accident. But other than that, it's where I get all my powers. I think one of those is more important than the others. Well, I mean, the Scotch, there is a lot of varietals. It's almost like wine with the different regions and woods and where they're getting everything from. But yeah, okay, yeah, we're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna move on then. A very brief explanation of apartheid for those who weren't familiar. Apartheid in South Africa started in 1948 under Anna. uh, under and off the i'm gonna cut that one out yeah i feel like i probably shouldn't uh shouldn't make the the mis mispronunciations in the explanation of apartheid also when all the words are normal english yeah Uh, So, a very brief explanation of apartheid for those who weren't familiar. Apartheid in South Africa started in 1948 under an authoritarian government and lasted into the 1990s. Uh, It made uh, pursuing personal relationships with members outside of one's race illegal. 3.5 million uh, non-white South Africans were forced out of their homes into designated districts, and anti-apartheid officials were jailed, including Nelson Mandela. And that concludes our extremely brief history lesson. Long story short, people suck. Yeah, people are bad everywhere all the time. Yep, that that's about it. That's all you need to know. Yes. Well, I mean, actually, definitely look into it more, because you can see how terrible people can be. Yeah. So you can try to avoid being a terrible person, too. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, that's, I rec- recommend that. Yeah, just, just yeah. in general, don't be jerks. Yeah, don't be jerks. Yeah. Yeah, it's all good. April 29th, 1997. Reports described a man-eating water monster with features that both describe a horse and a fish. This creature had apparently already claimed several victims. So is a, so were there any Irish immigrants in... Uh, South Africa at the time because because what if it's just a kelpie oh I like the idea of that like a a, a out of place kelpie because I mean the the rough like I mean you haven't really gone into it a lot yet but the rough description kind of reminded me of a kelpie yeah no I, I thought the same thing but I never actually thought maybe a kelpie Got it, it's out of place. It's not in its natural environment. I mean, if if you operate on the assumption that a kelpie is a real creature, then hypothetically, if, if there's if there's immigrants, like because there's a lot of, I think if my memory is correct, uh, South Africa was originally a British colony. Uh, yes, yeah, yes. So, in that case, it's not a huge jump to assume that. 
there are Irish and you know Scottish and all that yeah. stuff. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people with English accents in South Africa. Yes. Right. yes. So, Ezra Siguela, then the Minister of Agriculture and the current South African ambassador to Rwanda, told legislators that the creature had claimed several victims in the Mimslava uh, River. Okay, that was pretty good. That that was listen, man. If you if anyone can see the spelling I was looking at, that's a gold star pronunciation. Yeah, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you two gold stars for that one. Oh hell yeah! One for putting the correct pronunciation, be the accurate, and the other one yeah. for actually pronouncing it decently. There's an <laughs> MZ in there, guys. Yeah, yeah. There's an MZ and an MHL. Like it's it's something. Yeah, it's th- you know what it, it's it's how to win. Um, heck no, you know what it is. It's a way to win that one Magic the Gathering card where you have to. God, yeah, the, the hangman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh boy, you killed me on one of those. Yeah, there man, was one that you absolutely destroyed me on. I forget what the word was, but legumes. Man. Yeah, you did everything bean related. Yeah, I did lots of bean related words, and I always won. It was fantastic. <sighs> yeah. So Sigwela promised to send officials to search for the monster. However, not all of his peers took the idea of the creature seriously. Murmurs of Mamlambo were heard, referencing a Kahosa uh, mythology uh, of the second most populous tribe after the Zulus. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, one official stated that Nessie hasn't eaten anyone. What? But... Yeah, so so they're... they're some people are, are for, others are... are not taking him very seriously at all. And the name, uh, Mom Lambo, of the creature was um, referencing a uh, uh, another creature out of uh, okay. Kosa mythology. I get so they it just sort of started calling it that because it sounded like that creature. Okay. So, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I mean, if people are dying, so, like, mm-hmm. here's my question. I don't know if you looked into this, but were there actual, like, legitimate report like was there actually legitimate reporting of people dying yeah yeah they were real deaths okay so like mm, i feel like that's a little flippant yeah oh yeah like like, a little flippant yeah well the very next sentence says whether ezra took the whispers of a river monster seriously i cannot tell but it is clear that he took the deaths and the reports by the people seriously yeah, that's that's kind of how I feel about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's <laughs> like, not gonna lie. It doesn't matter if you believe. It matters. Like people are dying, so he's. Yeah, yeah. we, we he's, may want to figure this out. <laughs> yeah, that, and he's literally like the wildlife official. So like, he's the guy that's gonna be like, people are dying in an area of which I'm responsible. So I'm gonna dedicate some resources to try to really figure out what's going on, whether it be a monster or like uh, something else. Maybe they need to put up some signs somewhere saying, "Careful, shit's dangerous here." You know? Yeah. An article released the next day, April 30th, 1997, provided some additional context. In summary, after his 1997 Freedom Day speech celebrating the first democratic election in 1994, celebrated each April 27th, villagers approached Ezra and told him about the monster. They spoke passionately of the deaths, nine in the four months prior, and the most recent was of a schoolgirl who was buried the month prior. Ezra wow. promised... Yeah. Yeah, there's... That's a, that's a huge death toll. Yeah, there's a count. So Ezra promised to approach the ministry and have them send conservation officials to hunt the creature. So that's why he's doing it. People are giving him passionate, passionate speeches about, you know, people are dying and we need you to do something. So then he approached, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the council. So that's, that's sort of the chain of events that's happening here. As far as the Kosa and Zulu mythology aspect, I was hard-pressed to find anything substantial in writing, but from mm-hmm. the few lines I could find, it was in reference to a great water creature, a river goddess resembling a giant snake that, if caught, would grant riches to its captor. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, yep. it, it's also there's also the, the problem of um, certain cultural groups are very... Uh, spoken word so unless someone is taking the time to really catalog their their culture oh yeah it's difficult to to you know have a good resource well that 
basically that last couple lines that I read, I searched all over the internet, and that's sort of a mashup of all the information that I found that was also valid on a bunch of websites. Is it that, like, that two sentences took so much work to get that much information. I'll believe it. I'll totally believe that. Like, I I spent an unreasonable amount of time because I was like, someone somewhere has to have written something to try to, like, categorize, like, just, it's just not out there. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yep. According to one report, the creature's attack method was to attack its victim and drag them into the water. It would then break their head open to consume the brains and drain the blood from the victim. Hmm. Okay. So it's a vampiric it's... horsefish. Yeah. Um yep. Wow. So yeah, the uh that's I... I'm trying to think I can't off the top of my head think of any animals that go for the brains other than maybe zombies like parasites maybe and like yeah, prion, prion diseases and well, parasites well and prion disease is not a uh it's not, it's not a creature you know, it's, it's just like a, a bad it's protein. A protein that yeah that and because proteins like to fold like the other proteins next to them just prions are bad guys yeah they're don't know what causes them don't know how to stop them always 100 percent deadly Yep. Except for one case of rabies once, and nobody knows why the girl didn't die. It was like a little girl got rabies, and then she didn't have rabies. And, and like, it's a miracle. Like, it's an actual miracle. Like, there's only one person once who has ever survived that, and nobody knows why. That's insane. Yeah. I have never heard of that before. No, it's worth a Google. I'm going to have to Google that later. Yeah. Not right now. It's like super interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On topic. That's something that I should try to do. (laughs) Yeah. An article in the Cape Argus in Cape Town, South Africa, May 16th, 1997, titled Mamlambo on the Loose, adds. It's a good article name. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. (laughs) It's good. Most recently, the giant reptile was sighted near Lake Lubeleko a village on the Mizentlava River, not far from Mount Alif, about 176 kilometers, or 110 miles, southeast of Turban. I'll give you a solid B-plus on those pronunciations. Thank you. Yeah, there's, uh... I like to to think that all of my time in the high fantasy world, especially in the Dwarven Runes in uh, the Elder Scrolls series, has helped me read better. Uh, I don't know what those skills translate, but but continue, continue. Okay, like many, <laughs> <laughs> like many rural villages, in what used to be the Transkir Lubleko is scattered over several square kilometers of undulating hillside country. Police say the victims were drowned in the Mizent lava, which has swollen by heavy rains in the Lesotho during the wet season. I have seen some of the bodies of the so-called monstrous victims, Captain G. Mzuko of the Mount Aleph Police told Cape Argus. They had been in the water for some time, and, as often the case, river crabs had eaten away the soft parts of the faces and throats. In one case, the crabs were still clinging to the body when brought in. As far as we are concerned, there were cases of drowning, plain and simple. But to the people of the village, the mutilation just proves the monster's existence. It eats their faces off to suck out the people's brains, said an elderly Mr. Machunga, walking the lonely track with his dogs. It's a big snake, and I've seen what it does. Witnesses describe Mamlambo as being about 20 meters or 67 feet long, with short, stumpy legs, a crocodilian body, plus the head and neck of a snake, um, and it shines at night with a green light. So... I don't want to naysay the locals, but it, it does kind of it does kind of sound like someone hitting their head while being carried down a river and their skull cracking open. I don't recall if I put this in the copy or not, but I am getting like some real serious um, Kappa vibes off of this. Yeah, it, it definitely has it definitely has a. a flavors of the kappa for sure yeah um it, it i mean it also very much 
it very much is describable by um by natural events yeah yeah yeah. more mundane less supernatural more natural Mm -hmm. um yeah no i think this is another case of people um ascribing a supernatural entity to um natural well unfortunate but but deaths that that weren't necessarily well, caused by that it's it's one of those situations where uh people like to look for the easy answer yeah or rather not the easy answer but the answer that makes sense to them mm-hmm. right because it's hard to wrap your head around the idea of a loved one or someone you know just dying like falling into the yeah. water and dying because that's scary right mm-hmm. that that it's not that it makes you think less of them, but it's like the idea that something so mundane could end a life, right? Yeah. If you create a mythology based around that, or you create a monster, it gives you something to focus your anger and resentment towards. Mm-hmm. You can't really resent the river. Yeah, right? exactly. Because the river, the river is just nature. It's just a force that exists in the world. And there's nothing you can do about it. Like, what are you going to do? Punch a river? Yeah, I mean, you can. You can. It's useless. You can punch a fish. I wouldn't recommend that. Why? Don't hurt the fishy. What'd the fishy do? Well, what did the fishy... The the fishy's a brain sucker. Oh, that case. fishy. Yeah, in that case, yeah. he, can, he can punch the fishy. But, but, I mean, it kind of is how things work, especially with, like, conspiracy theories and stuff like that. Yeah. Where the world is scary because there's so much unknown. Mm-hmm. and it's it's better to have a conspiracy theory or an explanation for why the world did this thing right if oh it's yeah a, if it's a brain sucker then okay at the very least my loved one or whatever was mm-hmm. you know they lost their life to something that was trying to sustain itself and it can be killed so other people can't deal with that yeah but the other option is Oh, the river did it. It's random chance, and we can't block up the river. Yeah, it's it's one of those situations. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I have sympathy for the people, or maybe it's empathy. I guess it's empathy. I have empathy for the people, but I think that's that might, based on what I've heard so far, that's what I'm. Smelling. Yeah, yeah, no, that that's what it sounds like. And here's here's your um your fun fact for the day. Do you know that if you got all the people in the world to stand around? the equator of the earth like holding hands Mm -hmm. that um most of them would drown yeah i was actually just about to say that oh yeah okay most of them would drown you are Uh correct yeah (laughs) because most of the planet is water yeah yeah that's uh yeah that ends my series of uh fun facts that take a hard left turn i've got more of them but i'll spread them out okay sure yeah a group of women returning from a meeting at the village school assured uh, that the monster was real, saying, quote, We are not ignorant, superstitious people. They told me, uh, we are teachers, educated, and we know that the monster is there. That is why we do not cross the river anymore. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so this is this is kind of just uh, continuing what I was thinking. Yeah, right, because... Yeah. And, you know, I'm not knocking these people by any means. I get it. I legitimately understand where they're coming from. Yep. Um, but it kind of is the same reason that, like, for example, I have this this pet theory that the notion of, like, kosher and unclean yeah. animals and all that stuff is those animals and that type of meat carry disease, right? Like, yeah. think about what's, what's banned in kosher. Shellfish and pork. Yeah. Pork, if it's un- undercooked, will give you worms. Shellfish is just a bastion of all sorts of disease and mm-hmm. food poisoning. Yeah, and some would so, say it's only okay to begin with. Well, shrimp are phenomenal. Shrimp are pretty decent, thing. yeah. Uh, but the the notion of that is, think about the fact that these religions originated in, a, in the Bronze Age, right? Yeah. Um, The ability to cook, get a, a fire hot enough that you know, cooked the meat properly all the time, mm-hmm. you know, you're dealing with a not, not a hundred percent of the time thing. And you don't want 
your farm workers and the people in your, your, your village getting sick all the time. So what do you do? You say, okay, these foods are not allowed. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Because you could literally shit yourself to death. Yes. That was yeah. a real risk. So if you out if you ban foods that, that people get sick from, you know, it's a superstitious belief, but it, it's rooted in a real thing. And in this case, the superstitious belief is there's a monster that exists in the in the river that's eating people's brains. Yeah. What that really is is stay away from the river. It's dangerous. Yeah. Mytho Kozizi, uh Sig Kobeka, age six, says his father was eaten by the monster. When his when he's older, he plans to get a gun and hunt it. Once again, trying to find something that you can blame, finding something that well, you I can mean, kill. He's and six. he's a kid. He's, he's a got a buy on this one. Yeah. Oh no, he gets yeah. a buy, but just because he's six doesn't mean that he doesn't have the human condition. Yeah. True. That that's I I say that fully knowing that I do irrational things. Mm-hmm. I I have immense anxiety. Yeah, and we've all seen how you eat tacos. It's monstrous. Yes. Well, like I said in the Facebook group, um, Shaggy bestowed those powers upon me. <laughs> no, Shaggy eats by holding a billion layer tall sandwich up and then compressing it and eating it in one large bite. Mm-hmm. You eat the taco... Like it's done something wrong to you. That's the fact. <laughs> That's a fact. Yeah. It's a bad sandwich. It's like you've got, you eat it like you're listening to the ska version of Hurt by Johnny Cash. <laughs> oh my God. That would be amazing. <laughs> like, all right. So, so let's, I know we just talked about a, a kid's dad dying. Yeah. But. But, I need to explore what the ska version of her would sound like. Would it have like pick it up, pick it up, pick it up? It, it's it, so it's one. I it's all horns. It's only today. horns. The drums are just someone hitting like a a horn with a stick. So it's all horns, a hundred percent. That's a little horrifying. Yeah, well, it's it's her. Are you Googling it? Because I just invented that, but I hope someone already made a ska version of her. Actually, now I'm looking it up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I imagine uh, it's it's all skanking. Um, well, there's a emotion by Carly Rae Jepsen, except it's ska cover. Oh, oh, I made a ska cover of Hurt by Nine Inch Nails. Oh. Let me send this to you, Brandon, so we can discuss this. Is the there... track was not found. It was removed. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I, I'm I got to take some time. I'm give me a second. Give me a second. This is great. Okay. This is great audio, but that was originally yeah. what it was. Everyone tunes in for the live Google. Oh, Kenny what's this? Kenny the swordfish. Kenny the swordfish. This track was not found. Maybe it has been removed. Learn more. I, I'm thinking of a uh of a street lane manifesto style cover. Listen, right? get me a horn. I can make it. I think I, I think own street, all of the things, but a horn. I think street lane <laughs> manifesto might be able to pull it off. Though, right. Cause, cause they have like a moment of violence, a moment of silence. Uh, the three of us. I'm thinking that it might be something in the style of just give me a second. I need to do some quick, quick, quick Googling. Um, because I gotta remember the name. Everything goes numb. It might, it might be something like, yeah, I could see that. I could see her yeah. in that style. <laughs> you've now created, you've now created a thought for John. I mean, I have literally zero musical talent. <laughs> <laughs> I could try to find um some brass uh uh. uh wave files and try to program a midi thing so i can do <laughs> horns and then just play play everything else on actual like guitars and bass and drums and that i die i literally die i literally die if i did that that would be the end of me the podcast would be over not because i quit but because i'm literally dead oh maybe i should do it then 
Oh, you want me dead? <laughs> I see. Cool. Uh, uh, so that is what I could find um, for news articles. I tried to provide some additional context, but it was extremely difficult to find any mythological information on my Mlambo. However, I did find that, once again, the folks over at Destination Truth did an episode on the creature. Of course they did. Of because course. Because they deal in this type of stuff. This is like their bread and butter. I feel like they do so many sea monsters. They do a bunch of them. Uh, the first problem I found is that they claimed Mamlambo literally translates to brain sucker. Mm, that sounds like they didn't do their research. Yeah, but I was not able to find any sources that could verify this. The only article that mentioned both Mamlambo and Brain Sucker um, was the one I I mentioned earlier. And from what I can tell, Mamlambo is a the name of a river deity, and uh, that they, they're just wrong on that one. I'm gonna go ahead and call it there. Yeah, <laughs> they're just I mean, wrong. If it's a river deity that gives you anything you want when you catch it doesn't really track with yeah sucker i think they just found the same article that i did and just was said that it and just saw brain sucker and mom lambo in the same article and said they're translations and that's it yeah yeah i i think i think that's a common problem with people is they'll find the first answer that they think fits what they want and they'll go with it yeah then like actually dig a little deeper yeah yeah they then, in the first couple minutes, immediately run out of gas. Wow, that sounds like they're doing a real good job at uh, like resource management and stuff yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. After gassing up, they then spoke with Div de Vie, um, who is a game ranger assigned to hunting the creature. He spoke about being assigned to hunt the creature by Ezra. So this guy was actually one of the people that Ezra... Okay. Sent out. Okay, okay. Well, that's that's at least something credentials, yep. maybe. I mean, uh, I could say that, too, so I don't know if he yeah. actually was one of the people, but we'll, we'll assume he was. I don't know if he really was, but I'm assuming he was. And yeah. he did add a little bit more detail on top of what I could find through the different articles. He spoke of the creature being more active during bad weather, specifically during tornadoes, and he reinforced that it was a fresh water creature. So this mm. is an inland water creature. Okay, I'm just saying that, uh... This is all reinforcing the thing yeah, about... Yeah, this is, this is just reinforcing yeah. my, my notion that it's Mother Nature being Mother Nature. At Coxted College... <laughs> not college. At Coxted Village, they wow. get additional reports that the creature does also attack livestock. <laughs> Brandon, yeah. you were gonna say... You said at the beginning that you were gonna mispronounce everything. <laughs> It's so far, it's all the normal words. It's pretty much all the normal words at this point. I, I mean, you you basically nailed all the South African words, like, as much as someone who's not from South Africa can. But, man, do things like village trip you up. I know that it has the same last two letters as college, but, man, dude. Uh, well, no, it's because I was thinking of a joke in my head while I was reading and that was um it got it wasn't always named that it only got the name Coxted after it went to college the idea being that the whole village was promiscuous during college and then got the nickname of cock <laughs> when you explain the joke it makes it so much better yeah <laughs> 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 I uh I know someone in California who who I used to work with and uh mm-hmm. their last name is DeCock and my favorite joke to tell people is that it's not his real name, he just got that in college. <laughs> it's <laughs> That's a good one. He's um uh I'll say sounds exactly like Squizgar from uh from from uh uh, uh shit. That Metalocalypse. Band. Yes, Metalocalypse. Yeah really yeah isn't squizgar the one who has like the high like i don't know he's from like iceland or some shit yeah yeah (laughs) or like yeah (laughs) it's funny uh the remainder of the episode and and when i say that 
the remainder of the episode after they run out of gas and go to this one village um, is them packing a tent in a rainstorm, uh, which answers my question, how will they get a full episode out of so few resources? And the answer is they don't. They don't. They made a full episode out of them trying to pack a tent in a rainstorm. Huh. The full episode. Like, they lay in the first, like, five minutes, they run out of gas, get to Coxted Village, then go to a river and pack a tent, and they're like, here's our camera setup. The entire remainder of the episode is them in a rainstorm going, oh boy, this is a bad rainstorm. And then they call someone who has a van to gather their gear, and then it's like, you're long, long shots of, like, van coming down the road, van parking, them packing stuff in a rainstorm. Sometimes stuff blows away what? for the whole episode. Are you serious? Yes. Based on what you just told me, that's probably, like, a good solid 15 minutes of them just packing a van. Yes. Why? <laughs> because, because, and here's the other thing. This is, um, I think season one, episode two or three. Like season a super, one, episode two? Like a super early one. But, what? Right? So that means they they've they already got past the pilot. So, like, this this is with that, <laughs> that network money. But, <laughs> like, like, I'm assuming they were on a schedule and could not afford to scrap a full uh episode and reshoot somewhere else is the only reason i could think they would keep that but like yeah but at least make that make, make that like episode seven yeah right like make it a, a hat second half of the season episode don't make it a don't make it like a first half of the season episode you gotta yeah. save your good stuff for that yeah and then it, the good stuff for the last like uh, three uh-huh what that's just <laughs> Um, now imagine just... having to watch it. No. I watched I the whole thing because I was like, man, after this first five minutes, they, there's got to be something else. And then you get to the end and, and nope. I just... <laughs> like, who approved that? I don't know. Oh. It's, it's like the only question I have is like, why? 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 Yeah, and there's, there's a lot of, like, the main guy, people trying to pack stuff, and, like, they know, you can tell that they know, like, shit, we're not getting a full episode out of this, so then the, like, there's a lot of, like, the guy, like, get back in the tent! It's not safe! <laughs> like, Why? <laughs> they've got to make it dramatic, otherwise. Yeah, but, like... Which is why I think they called in a van to begin with, because they're like, okay, we clearly aren't can't get out of the tent because we've only got this one day to shoot and it's a rainstorm. So how do we turn the rainstorm until, so then like, all right, let's call a guy with a van. <laughs> how do we turn the rainstorm into a full episode? Yeah. I mean, hypothetically, isn't the creature supposed to be more active during a rainstorm in the first place? So like, yeah, if it's you know, again, tornadoes, bad weather, rainstorms, it gets people and livestock. It's all rolling back into like, Kappa-esque, it's people ascribing the supernatural to explain deaths. Yeah. Um, like, I, I mean, on the one hand, I don't honestly have a problem with that. Because, to me, it's more or less, hey, if that's what makes you feel better, everyone deals with death differently. Yeah. If that's your coping mechanism, that's your coping mechanism. Like, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna make fun of you for doing that. You know, yeah. I'll joke about like I'll joke about other stuff, but I'm not going to joke about, you know, somebody grieving or mourning, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. It's not, yeah. It, it's, uh, it's like a really that's like a bad case of punching down to joke in that yeah. way. <laughs> so, yep. And uh, that's all I've got for the mom Lumbo. I knew from the start it was going to be a shorter one. But I thought it was really interesting in part because it happened in a really uh, transitional period of history, mm. uh, specifically in the region where the monster is found. Um, I just thought it was a cool monster I hadn't heard of before. And I thought uh, we're just coming off the heels of some heavy hitters. We'll say Skinwalkers, Thunderbirds, 
and stuff like that. So I wanted to yeah. go into like a uh, a lesser yeah. known type of monster, like a, a palate cleanser of sorts. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like a nice palate cleanser. I'm not gonna lie; I think our last four episodes were like the longest four episodes of the show so far. They were like, so long. Like, um, I'm not even joking. I think they were like I'm. I'm looking it up right now. But what the I last think... one do? 142 after editing. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, 100, one, one hour, 46 minutes for the Skinwalker Ranch episode. So, yeah. we, we've been actually slowly getting longer and longer. I think yeah. it's probably well, episode a good one idea. was a half hour, and then here we are. Th- that was episode, what was that, 21, 23, or something like that. Yeah. And uh, that that is almost two hours. <laughs> yeah, that was a big one. Yeah. And... Almost none of it was about skinwalkers. No. Well, the first part one was. Part two was more about the people. <laughs> it's fair. Yeah. But yeah, so... I mean, I think it's an interesting story. There's no, like... the the Looking at the pic... There's a picture in here of the uh, Mamambo. And I forgot to make a note of it. It doesn't look like a particularly unbelievable creature. Like, I think no. I've seen a fish that kind of looks similar to that. Yeah, I mean, th- th- it's a hand sketch. Yeah. Um, But it doesn't show scale. So that looks like just a normal fish you wouldn't want to catch. Yeah. Um, it looks like a it looks like a bony fish. But if you imagine that, like, 20 foot long or whatever, then you're like, oh, damn. But the, the sketch doesn't really show the scale uh, too well. Yeah, I mean, but also catfish can get huge, too. Oh, did you see that fucking River Monsters episode with the catfish? I did not see the River Fuck Monsters that. episode. Fuck that. They are... Huh? I was going to say, actually, no. It, you could say that about everything on R- River uh, uh, Monsters. It's just, fuck that. That guy's nuts. Oh, yeah. No, that dude... That dude's crazy. The, um... But, like, most... Most... I'm not saying it is in this case, but most, uh river monsters do end up being catfish because they're just actual monsters yeah well there's the coelacanth which we should probably do an episode on eventually just because it's cool it'll probably be a shorter episode but yeah it's it's definitely an interesting story in history because in theory well no it literally is a cryptid that became a non-cryptid yeah but it, it was there's a lot more circumstances to that and there's a lot of stuff to talk about in regards to that but yeah you know, yeah yeah um and one additional thing is i am proud to say i finally perfected revision one of my falafel taco recipe if anyone follows me on social media they know this is something i've been talking about for several weeks yeah it's you've you've been putting your heart and soul into this falafel recipe i have so here is how you can make a falafel taco Mix three tablespoons of falafel mix. It has to be a mix with fava beans. That's the key. No fava beans. Get the fuck out of here. With three tablespoons of water. This is a 50-50 mix. It's good for two tacos. Scale everything up accordingly if you want to make more. Roll those into five or six uh, falafel balls after they rest for about 28 minutes. Put them in an air fryer at 400 degrees for eight minutes. While they're going, mince some onion into topping, so just do however much you like, and then slice up a block of Colby Jack cheese. Put does two it have stacks... to be Colby Jack? It does. Or your okay. favorite cheese. Whatever. This That's just what cheese I like. Put two stacks of two corn tortillas in the oven. Um, this just acts as a nice little flat platform for you to start stacking everything. So mm-hmm. while your falafel balls are cooking, now's the time to make the sauce. What you're going to do is get a small po- uh, saucepan, put two-thirds of a tablespoon of butter unsalted in the saucepan, one and a half tablespoons of Frank's Red Hot Sauce, and one and a half tablespoons of maple syrup. Melt and mix everything together. When your falafel balls are done, cut them all in half on the corn tortillas, Put a stripe of avocado mayonnaise or just straight avocado down the center of the corn tortillas. This is going to help keep the falafel balls moist (laughs) while baking them. It's a very important step, otherwise they will dry out. Put the fluffle ball halves on top of that strip. Add the onion, your sauce, and cheese to taste. Put into the oven at 400 degrees until the oven uh, melted the cheese, and then you may enjoy. 
<laughs> I can't believe you got a falafel taco recipe in an episode. I had to. It's listen. I alluded to this recipe. I think like six episodes ago or something. You did. You did. You set it up. It's it's like Chekhov's taco. Yeah. It's che- exactly. It's Chekhov's taco. Yeah. I, I think that's the name for this taco. Yeah. Chekhov earned it by not <laughs> not doing anything at all and me making a joke. Yeah. <laughs> I just. <sighs> all right. Um. Also, if you uh, if you're a what is it, Hodag or higher list subscriber, you yeah, can, uh, you can Hodags get this, are higher. You can get this recipe in text, so I guess that's a benefit. <laughs> <laughs> that's an unexpected benefit of being a Hodag. We don't advertise it, but apparently, uh, falafel taco recipes are now a part of the Hodag subscription. Oh, and yeah. jackalope for that matter. Just wait until I perfect my cauliflower hot wings. <laughs> What's that going to be? Half an episode? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we got a, a quicker one this week for you. It's still about an hour, though. Um, yeah. I mean, this is this is maybe two thirds of the length of my normal copies the last two episodes being longer so i thought this would actually be shorter than than um than it was well we got i got caught up in ska you mentioned yeah. ska so yeah we have no real deadline but but uh our length that we target but i think like about an hour plus or minus a half hour yeah that's, <laughs> that's about right yeah so i guess we'll do the plugs now before i start yawning Try to sound. Uh, try not to sound so excited. You're going to start freaking everyone out. Wee. <laughs> uh, so our website is cryptopediacast.com. Uh, on Instagram, we're at cryptopediacast. In Twitter, we're also at cryptopediacast. Uh, if you want to email us, you can email us directly at cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. Uh, we've got a Patreon. There's three tiers there. Uh, they're all based on fearsome critters of the American North. Uh, there's Ooh. the, let's see, Hoop Snake, which is just a thank you tier. Uh, Hodag, which gives you apparently falafel recipes now, as well as well as episode copy. Um, and Jackalope, which gives you content, access to content that we're releasing. I think last week we released another episode of Lover's Lane. Uh, it was a good one. I yeah, did a lot of also horse puns. Horse related, yeah. Yeah. Tying all this stuff together. There were a lot of horse puns in the the, the description for that. Oh You're yeah. You're welcome. I actually I updated the description after I sent it to you. I oh, did I make saw a it, mis- yeah. I did make a mistake. I did make a mistake. <laughs> uh I I I said excited instead of chomping at the bit. I'm sorry. Oh I'm making my public apology. Mm-hmm. for that because i did screw up i left a pun hanging no one likes a dangling pun it's, a, it's dangerous it is dangerous uh-huh. here's a fun fact another the fun fact filled episode the way in which yoda speaks is called he um a dangling participle mm-hmm. so he speaks using a dangling participle which means he uses the part of the sentence that participates at the end like okay. dumbass you are you are is being the part that that uh, is participating. Yeah, you are is the part that's the dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. We've got a Facebook group as well, and if you want to, um, if you want to get in contact with us or follow the various things that we're posting, um, you can follow us there because that's kind of where we do more interaction with everyone. Um, oh yeah, fun articles that we find back yeah. and forth banter. Yeah, there's. Yeah. I'll occasionally post YouTube videos that are related to what I'm doing research on. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll co- co- occasionally post insults to John. There's a lot of <laughs> insults directed at me. Uh, that's just the way that things go. <laughs> I've come to terms with the fact that uh, that's basically a platform for me to take my lumps. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but we also post a lot of stuff to the Twitter as well. Um, mm-hmm. Well, less less to the Cryptopedia Twitter, more to our individual Twitters. Yep. Um, 
if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Um, we got a few. We got a few reviews on the uh, 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 iTunes. Um, if you listen to any podcatchers and they have, uh, if you're using any podcatchers and they have the ability to do reviews, be sure to leave a review there, just to kind of drive up our numbers a little bit. Um, you know, just just so people realize that there's actual humans listening to this podcast. <laughs> uh, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to do it. Our two longest like research things were literally suggestions. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. And uh, if you've got any creepy pasta or curtain pasta, I'm still waiting. I'll eventually, <laughs> I'll eventually read something. I got some ideas. Um, uh-huh. I think I might do an SCP series. Oh, that's pretty but cool. I've been reading a lot of SCPs. I I've, got deep into SCP. Yeah. Like a while ago. I actually. So here's the thing. I have an app on my tablet. Do you? That, that has the like access to the website and lets me just yeah. like scroll through and it turns it dark for nighttime reading. Yeah. I think I hit like one sixty nine last night. Holy shit. For those of you who don't know, SCP is special containment procedure and uh it refers to like special well the special containment procedures required to hold the I think they call them like subject and then subject a number. Mm-hmm. And they're all like different like Creepy pasta style uh, monsters. I think one thousand's Bigfoot. Is it? Yeah. There's a lot of Dude. good ones. Uh, six three two is a particularly good one. There's a really deep rabbit hole on it. Is um, that the, the like doll? No, six three two is the uh, hard to kill lizard. Okay. Um, one seventy two, I think, is the first one. If my memory yeah. is correct, that's the uh, like paper mache thing. Okay. I think. Yeah, wait, no, it's it's SCP seventy two. Sorry, it's not one seventy two. No, that's not it either. What? Wait, which number is it? Ah, one seven three. I was off. Ah, uh, gotcha. That's a that's a weird way to be off. Yeah, by like, one. Oh, but it's not even like a numeric like like it's not like each SCP has a m- numeric value. I literally was off by one on the list <laughs> that's really weird yeah anywho uh what do you got to, what do you got to plug this week brandon you can find me on instagram at donkey underscore hands my website is boyerb.com my email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com and my twitter is at crypto brandon capital c capital b um as always i'm New 2057 on Instagram. My Twitter is JF Dunham. Uh, website's still dead. <laughs> and uh, you can email me, John, at CryptoPediaCast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. <sighs> so this was a, a shorter episode of Cryptopedia this week, but a goodie. I liked it. Yeah. Uh, so, as always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. I do have my next episode, uh, The Creature Chosen. Yeah. Because I did the preliminary, is there enough to get an episode out of this research? Mm-hmm. I'm so excited about it the next episode that we're about to record is going to shock you oh that's gonna be fantastic yeah all right so let's let me stop the recording